I want to talk about the akimbo. I always want to talk about the akimbo. Um, frankly, my family is sick of me talking about the akimbo. Here's the deal. When I go to buy something, I, I want to know what I'm getting. I want to know how it works, why I should use it, what the benefits are of it. So I want to kind of do a series of videos here about the akimbo, what its function is, and uh, how to get the most out of it. All right, to start with, this is the akimbo. It is a multi-sender rope access device. Uh, multi-sender because it uh, can be connected on, on the ground. You tie yourself into it and you're able to climb, especially for tree climbing, which is uh, its initial design use. I'm sure it'll be used for other things in the future. Um, it can be used to go up the rope. It will hold you in place and you can descend back down the rope when you choose to. I figured the best place to start was with just what the akimbo is, how it works, how it functions, to see if we can do a deep dive into how it's engineered. Let's take a look at the basic design. So basically you've got a top arm, a bottom arm, and the spine on the back that holds the whole thing together. Akimbo means with, with arms ensconced in, a, in an odd position, and when you open this thing up, that's exactly what it does. It goes into a very odd position and the arms kind of flip all cattywampus. So the way the whole mechanism moves together, people are calling it the jaw. Uh, that it, it, it opens and closes a lot like a jaw. <laughs> when the jaw is open, it puts extra tension on the rope. When the jaw is closed, it allows its rope to slip through cleanly. So let's talk about the components of this a little bit and how this is put together. That way you can get a better idea of the physics behind what's happening here. So when I buy a gadget, um, I want to understand the physics that I'm using. It, for some reason, it, it makes my head spin in a good way. So let's take a look at these arms, how they work, and how they impact the rope. First of all, in the construction, each arm has two side plates. They're held together by three stainless steel pins. One on the end, in both cases, is a friction pin. Uh, it's an eccentric friction pin because it's adjustable. You notice there's a little swing arm on the side. Move that out of the way, you've got three little holes, and you've got a tiny little indexing pin that goes in those holes and you can move it to adjust so that if your rope is thinner or thicker, if it is, uh, if it is stiffer or, or a softer rope, you can adjust to it. Um, you can also adjust to the weight of the climber. If you're a, if you're a heavier climber, um, you can make it a little bit tighter and get a little more friction going there. Moving on down, you've got this red spring-loaded cam. This cam is also on a stainless steel pin, and it rotates out and allows the rope to slip through. It's good to have the akimbo up in the tree with you on the rope. You don't want to be up in a tree and have your akimbo on the ground and going, oh, wow, I wish I could ride down on that. That would have been nice. It allows the device, when it's clipped on the rope, to hang on it without sliding down the rope. The spring-loaded cam at the top lets you do that. The third steel pin here is the hinge that hooks onto the spine, so it allows the arm to go up and down. The spine itself, again, it's got, it's got two aluminum plates, and it's got a steel pin through the middle to hold it in place. This pin has a shackle on it. When the production version comes out, the shackle is not going to be there. And I, I, if I understand the logic right, and part of this is a guess, but, uh, but part of this is, is uh, just discussion that's gone on, this shackle is big enough that you could hook a carabiner onto it, and it would be tempting for somebody to use this in a DDRT configuration uh, where you've got your rope coming back down and you hook it onto that, that shackle and try and climb on that. Um, you, you definitely don't want to do that. That's not what the shackle's there for. It's just for tending the device and while you take out the slack in your rope. That's it. For me, this is only used during ascent. Once I'm up in the tree, I, I disconnect from the shackle completely, um, and I don't use it after that point. But the uh, production version that's coming out has a, a loop built into one of these aluminum plates. Uh, you can see a picture of it right here. Um, very cool. Uh, so that way you can't accidentally put a carabiner in the wrong spot. It'll only fit down on the, the primary anchor. Okay, so moving down into this lower arm. Again, we've got the, the hinge pin right here that hinges it to the spine. And then we've got a, uh, we've got the We've got another rotating cam. This one is not spring-loaded. Uh, this one is loose, and you want that loose because when you're going up the tree, you want it to pull up out of the way. And when you're going down the tree, 
it's actually the weight on this anchor point. It's one of the points that's going to cause friction here. I'll talk more about that in a second. Okay, lastly, this last steel pin that's on the end of this right here. Again, you notice there's a, uh, a tiny little swing arm, and you've got another six adjustments you can do down on the bottom of it. So you can do adjustments at the top and at the bottom. You can mix and match all over the place. gives you all kinds of options for all kinds of ropes, depending on what you want. So the eccentric friction pin on the bottom um, also has a roller on it. This is beautiful for a lot of reasons. For one thing, it, it is an eccentric pin, so it allows you to adjust it to match your rope. Um, but because it has a roller on it, when this is in the closed position and on your rope, um, it makes tending very easy because you're going against this roller. It's kind of like a pulley on the very bottom that you can use to, uh, to tend the slack out of that rope. All right, so that's the basic design of the akimbo for its individual parts. Now, from a physics perspective, we've got some really cool things going on here. Um, first of all, if you take each of these, these sections, these arms individually, uh, you might say, well, this arm just puts two friction points on the rope. It works the same way as a rope wrench. And it kind of does at one level. But also, this, this cam in here, the spring-loaded cam, really plays with friction in a different way. So not only have you got this device on there and it tips on the rope and causes friction in there, uh, but you've got a lot of other things going on too. Again, same with the, the lower arm. With this adjustable cam at the bottom, the amount of weight you put on it really impacts the friction on the rope. It's pinching the rope every time you pull down. Also, the angle of this is, is impacting the friction on the rope because it's bending that rope to go around, around the uh, lower anchor point. Now, if you put this all together, you might say, well, well, yeah, if this thing tips back and forth like this, uh, it's going to increase or decrease friction on the rope. That's going to come into play on it. And then there's a whole other element here, too. Because this jaw can open, as it opens, you've got a whole different kind of play on the rope this way. So you've got play on the rope this way, you've got play this way, you've got play all different ways on the rope that's going to increase or decrease friction. And what that results in is a very responsive device. This thing is smooth. It's like butter. One thing that you have to get used to on the akimbo, though, is that it does not stop like a friction hitch. If you put a friction hitch on your rope, uh, you're sliding down the rope, you let go of the friction hitch, you stop. Done. The akimbo is a lot more fluid than that. So if you're sliding down and you just release it, uh, it's going to stop slowly. And I'll, I'll shoot some video of that for the, for the next video when I demo how to how the basic operation is in the tree. But when you let go, you're going to slide for a little bit. Might be, depending on the speed you're going, depending on your weight, you might slide for a foot or two feet or five feet, uh, depending on, on how you've got those settings. Again, that eccentric pin on the top and the bottom makes a big difference to how this thing is experienced when you're actually on the rope. Um, but the end result, no matter what, is a really smooth ride. I mean, if you're flying out of a tree and you're going fast and you let this thing go, it's going to slow you down, but it's, it's going to do it uh, gradually. There's no herky-jerky going on on the rope. It's going to be smooth. Something else I found, if you're sliding down fast and you want to stop, if you flip that top up, it's going to put a ton of friction on the rope, and it's going to stop you a lot faster. So cool tricks to know as you uh, start playing around with this thing. Right, so that's my deep dive, close-up look into the physics behind the akimbo. Um, if you have any questions, you can throw them down below. If there's anything you want to see done with this thing, Aside from breaking it, I'll do our be my best to film it. Okay, so according to Rock Exotica, the company who is going to be releasing the production version of the Akimbo, uh, they're going to be releasing that sometime in the spring of 2018. That's their current target. That's a very soft date. Um, it's already moved a couple times. It, it may move again. Um, and the, I've heard rumors about the price point. I'm not ready to put those out there to see if, uh, if we're even close. Spring of 2018, look for probably a hard date announcement of when it's going to be available, when you can buy it, and how much it's going to cost. I can't say enough, though, about the inventor of this, uh, Jamie Merritt. Uh, that gentleman has done a slam-bang job of creating an incredible climbing device that I believe is going to change the industry. There's a lot of other devices out there that have been predecessors to it and that have led to this and that have contributed to its design. Um, and there's other devices that are, that are hot on its heels and, and trying to innovate as, as quickly as they can, like the Bulldog Bone, that are, that are doing a great job, too, of catching up with this type of 
fully mechanical device that doesn't rely on a hitch in any way to get the job done. Some climbers are going to be put off by that. They're not going to like that there's there's a mechanical device that they're hanging off of and, and not something a little more earthy like a rope and a knot that they tied that they can trust a little more. For me, I've always loved tech. This is tech. This is cool stuff. In my next video, I'm going to show you how to use this thing and it's going to be a little bit more climbing, a little less talking. If you want to see what I'm doing with it next, subscribe and I will talk to you soon. Good job, bring it here. Good job, thank you.